Joining us now is Max Blumenthal. He's a journalist and author of Republican Gamora, which is an absolutely essential book for understanding the modern Republican Party. Uh, and he's talking with us about his new piece in Alternet, Exposing the Dark Forces Behind the Snowden Smears. How are you doing, Max? I'm good. I'm good. Good to be back with you. Uh, it's uh, great to have you on. So, I, uh, you know, over the past couple of days, uh, obviously, there's been a couple of articles, one in the uh, New York Daily News, the other in BuzzFeed, which were, you know, just sort of essentially, uh, you know, at best, at worst, uh, at best gossipy, at worst sort of hit pieces on Glenn Greenwald. Uh, and uh, they seemed to follow a very similar pattern. Uh, and I'm wondering... Uh, your article kind of contextualizes that, and you have some ideas as to what uh, might be behind those pieces. And I'm wondering if you could kind of explain the, the main takeaways of your piece. Um, I should clarify that uh, while I do um, kind of put those articles in context as um, kind of coordinated opposition research dumps, um, what I focused on is a piece that appeared a day before those two articles uh, did in BuzzFeed, which was another separate opposition dump designed to um, cast uh, to, to support this emerging narrative of Edward Snowden, the whistleblower, the source of Greenwald um, on the Prism program, as a you know a hypocrite who is on a global hypocrisy tour, in the words of Kurt Eichenwald in the in Vanity Fair, and. Uh, what this article relied on, ironically, were documents leaked from inside um, Ecuador's government, um, apparently by some opposition source, classified documents showing that um, the Ecuadorian government had attempted to procure um, spy equipment from two Israeli firms through a U.S. middleman or surveillance equipment uh, for about $500,000, but there was no evidence in this article by Rosie Gray um, which was, you know, marketed as this big exclusive. There is no evidence that the surveillance equipment had ever been used. Um, and I thought this is funny. You know, where did they get these documents from? Um, I knew, you know, I'm pretty well aware of the, you know, situation in, in Washington that there are, that there's a whole network of think tanks and lobbyists who are, I'm um, incredibly opposed to the government of Rafael Correa, mm -hmm. um, who is the sort of left-wing populist president of Ecuador, and they're attempting to, they would love to um, see him disappear in a coup, um, as the leftist president of Honduras did, and um, as they attempted to do to Hugo Chavez, he's already faced one coup. Um, and they've been clamoring for um, the U.S. to cancel all trade deals with him this network of right-wing lobbyists and think tanks, since uh, Correa gave sanctuary at the Ecuadorian embassy in London to Julian Assange. Um, they've been using Assange against them. So they've stepped, they, when it appeared that he was going to extend asylum to uh, Snowden, who's stuck in Moscow, I'm not sure if he's going to do it now, um, this group really started amplifying their calls for sanctions on Ecuador. And, and I saw, so I thought this story is really funny. Who, who planted this story? And I started, you know, and I know that BuzzFeed is a PR laundromat and that Rosie Gray and Ben Smith, the BuzzFeed editor-in-chief, um, are happy to do the bidding of neocons so, and, and you allow them to turn their website into a, a platform for these kind of attacks. So I, I just started, you know, looking into it and I found some pretty remarkable things. Yeah, so let, let's get into the more of the kind of specific discussion and critique of BuzzFeed, but I, I'm interested in this kind of devil's brew that you kind of put together of lobbyists and exiled uh, people connected to the aristocracy and the far right uh, in Latin America and former kind of senior administ uh, Bush administration officials who, uh, you know, this is their business, essentially, pushing for uh, right policies, uh, right-leaning policies in Latin America, uh, and they've been agitating, as you say, uh, against all of these Latin governments for the past several years, regardless of, you know, even before uh, the emergence of Assange in this type of situation. So could you give us some details on to who these people are specifically, 
uh, and what information uh, they relayed uh, to to BuzzFeed. Yeah, I really started studying this network back in uh, 2004 when I did a piece for Salon dot com uh, about the coup that um, the, the the coup in Haiti mm-hmm. um, that that forced the Jean Bertrand d'Aristide from power. Um, and I note and and I was able to really trace the coup through the these sort of paragovernmental groups that were um, NGOs, but they were really doing the work that the CIA used to do in Latin America, especially in Central America in the 19, um, from the 1960s to the 1980s, um, covertly, and they would do it overtly. They would basically work elections and prop up opposition figures and encourage them to take action against leaders the U.S. didn't like. I'm referring to the National Endowment for Democracy, the Institute the International Republican Institute and the National Democratic Institute. And uh, they, I traced you know, this plot against Aristide all the way to Roger Noriega, who was then um, George W. Bush's assistant secretary for Western Hemisphere, um, and Otto Reich, who also held that position. He was Bush's uh, Latin American handler, and Reich is a sort of an interesting character. I don't know how he managed to get through Senate confirmation. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a guy who possibly um, helped a Cuban terrorist um, named Orlando Bosch um, get out of Venezuela after bringing down um, a commercial aircraft and confessing to, to bringing down a commercial aircraft. Um, uh, that contained, uh, for example, the North Korean Olympic team. It was a Cuban flight, and he did so as, uh, you know, as an act of terror against the Castro regime. Um, and Orlando Bosch now has a day named after him in Miami because possibly of the intervention of Otto Reich. Uh, Otto Reich was also involved in helping uh, the Contras generate propaganda inside the U.S. He was singled out by the U.S. Comptroller General for uh, having engaged in prohibited covert propaganda activities. Right. Now, where does Otto Reich fit into this story? Otto Reich is currently a lobbyist in Washington. That's kind of what you do after you go into government, I guess. Um, and he's working <laughs> with someone named Ezekiel vasquez Gur who is an Argentinian economist. That's kind of his right-hand man at this lobbying firm. And they oversee accounts like Lockheed Martin, ExxonMobil, and Bacardi. Bacardi is, of course, the, the um, Cuban exile family that wrote the Helms-Burton Act in 1996 um, that um, embargoed everything on, on the government of Cuba, including um, essential medications and prescription drugs. Um, and and indeed, you know, these guys are trying to get these companies um, back into places like Ecuador, where major industries have been nationalized and um, economies have been restructured under a populist socialist model. These corporations hate Rafael Correa. They hate Hugo Chavez. They, they hate uh, the Bolivian government. And so there's an ulterior agenda here. And to complement their lobbying operation, what Vasquez Gur and Otto Reich have done is they just churn out op-eds constantly for major publications, including Foreign Policy and the Miami Herald, demonizing people like Rafael Correa, um, who you know has not always been the most democratic leader. He's passed some really draconian um, laws cracking down on the media in his country and exploiting these laws to call for disaster. So they're so they're 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 stating their opposition under the under the guise of human rights, when we know it's about, um, you know, corporate control and neoliberalism. Right, so I just want and to think that's... in the past year, I just, just, think, just quickly, sorry, in the past year, um, they've really ramped up their campaign on Korea because he gave asylum to Assange. And so it's these two lobbyists that I'm talking about um, who kind of pioneered this narrative that uh, Korea should be punished for sheltering Assange, and they've now kind of tried to amplify it because of the rumors that he was going to um, give sanctuary to Snowden. Yeah, no, and I, I just wanted to sort of, I think that's an important point to reiterate, that it's not that the, some of the issues raised about the human rights record of Correa or, some, or any of these other leaders, for that matter, aren't legitimate. It's just that they're being cynically used as handmaidens 
um, to push an alter uh, an ulterior agenda uh, by these lobbyists that you've talked about. Um, yeah. So so. Yeah. Um. The, interestingly enough, that BuzzFeed uh, the, the 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 documents BuzzFeed got on uh you know Ecuador's own spying uh that that they say Ecuador does um those documents were were taken down by those websites that they uploaded them to like uh, Scribd and um and under the the DMCA and BuzzFeed is taking that and turning that into a big story now where they're you know trying to push like ooh look uh, Ecuador sent some uh, shady PR firm to take these documents down and it's just interesting to see like how you know th- they're able to turn that into a story to attack uh too it's like they're just you know really giving into these uh, these groups that that fed them these stories to begin with in hopes of really painting Ecuador and uh, Korea in a bad light. Yeah, uh I noticed that and the documents of they're claiming that Senan which is uh Ecuador's intelligence service uh forced uh Scrib to remove the documents. I've seen really no evidence of that. Um I think it's remarkable by the way that the people who are out to get Snowden um, are so, are so overjoyed with, and, and that there are these leaked documents out there from another government, and they, they're using these leaked documents to support their cause. I mean, I what, what I wrote is that uh, apparently their problem isn't leaking. On principle, their problem is w- which government the leaks embarrass. Um, and I, let me get back to those documents um, by talking about another um, interesting figure who's involved in this story. Um, but first, um, you know, I, thought, I, I, I went to Ezekiel vasquez Gur, uh, Otto Reich's lobbying partner's Twitter account, and I noticed that tw- like 25 minutes after this story appeared, um, he was promoting it heavily in Spanish, he was, and he was personally thanking uh, BuzzFeed editor-in-chief Ben Smith for, quote, unmasking Korea's hypocrisy. So, I mean, it's just like... You know, when I find out about a story, I usually don't find out about it 20 minutes after it appeared. It seems like he had been tipped or he knew it was coming somehow. And then I noticed that a a, a really shadowy character named Alec Boyd, who I'd come across in a previous investigation I did about a right-wing activist uh, who sort of... um, markets himself as this human rights hero named Thor Halverson, who runs um, the Human Rights Foundation and the Oslo Freedom Forum. You know, when I was, when I was, reading, a- when I was reading your piece and that name, Thor, uh, Thor Havelson came up, I just automatically remembered how just out of the blue, like last month, BuzzFeed was pushing this piece called like, uh, is this the face of a new global human rights movement? Right. And it was all about this Thor guy. And I have never heard of him before, to be honest with you. And I just thought it was interesting yeah. that they were just pushing this piece like, like, like it was this big story that everyone should know about it, and yeah. this is the name you should know. It was just amazing to me to also like when when I was reading your piece for that name to come up, and it just all was like full circle to me. I'm sorry for interrupting, but I just wanted to point that out. No, I'm glad you you intervened with that because that's important, and that was by Rosie Gray, who's also the author yes, yes. of this Ecuador piece, and she was flown out to the Oslo Freedom Forum. Um, along with mostly like neocon and liberal interventionist type journalists. I don't know who flew her out or whether she accepted resources from Halverson to do this story, but there seemed to have been some kind of quid pro quo there because, you know, BuzzFeed readers would not ordinarily care about him. And she was just used to provide sympathetic uh, coverage and support his public relations operation. Let me just kind of bring it back to this story and not uh, waste too much time on Halverson, although you should, uh, your listeners should really read my piece at Electronic Intifada about him and the Oslo Freedom Forum. We'll put a link um, up because... to that on the site. Okay, great. Yeah, um, yeah, go ahead. And so he uh, formerly employed this character, Alec Boyd, who's a London representative of the Venezuelan opposition, someone who has used his website to call for the assassination and torture of uh, Venezuelan officials. Um, He's called for their dead bodies to be thrown over the slums of Caracas. And he said he wished he could uh, do to them what Genghis Khan did. Um, And this is a guy who pretends to be a human rights activist. Um, He, on his own website, shops himself as an opposition opposition researcher or a hit artist. He says Alec can be 
contracted to do due diligence on individuals and companies in Venezuela and Latin America. And I noticed that he actually had the story. Uh, he had the documents that BuzzFeed claimed were theirs exclusively. He had them first on his website and more. He was in intimate contact with whoever BuzzFeed's source was. Um, it, it, unless, and, and it's possible that he could have been the source himself. Um, and then I noticed that he tweeted at Rosie Gray um, and he said, good work on your Snowden post. Evidently, Ecuadorian source leaked same info to you guys. Seems I jumped the gun before you. So this, this indicated bizarre, that... Bizarre, that's really yeah. bizarre, yeah. This is obviously showing that they either shared the source or that he was creating kind of plausible deniability for himself if he was the source. Um, and he's since released more documents. Those documents have not been taken down. I think he's used Scrib to put those documents up. So I don't know what the hell BuzzFeed is talking about, that they're like, you know, under attack by these repressive governments. Um, I don't know if he's ever met Rosie Gray, but they are both connected through Thor Halverson. Boyd used to work for the, the um, Oslo Freedom Forum and sorry for the Human Rights Foundation, which Halverson founded. And Rosie Gray went out to Oslo this year to provide Halverson with um, positive PR. And by the way, Thor Halverson's first cousin is one of the key leaders of the Venezuelan opposition and was involved in the coup against Hugo Chavez in 2002. Um, so, so all these characters are part of this right-wing Latin American opposition cabal that's looking to take down all these, all these socialist governments. And then you have a reporter like Rosie Gray, who's basically a PR agent for neocons and corporate lobbyists. And, uh, you know, her response to my article was, I love your passion, quoting Eli Lake. So not much of a response. And I think it's pretty obvious what went on here, even though we don't exactly know who the, who the source is. We have it conclusively identified them. We can tell what's going on with this article and how uh, a group of right-wing Latin American lobbyists, Bush administration figures, and, uh, and, 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 and shadowy uh, right-wing international operatives are exploiting the Snowden um, saga and the drama surrounding Snowden to target uh, Rafael Correa and his government. Yeah, I think that his this is... legitimately elected government. Yeah, legitimately elected twice, I believe. Um, in, I think twice. It's, he has about sixty-five yeah. percent popularity, and you know, for all of the repressive measures he's enacted, uh, the elections were judged to be free and fair. 